Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, in Odyssey Station and Radio.com. It is now Odyssey. Download that Odyssey app because then you can listen to The Rock and all the music, news, sports, and podcasts that move you. That's right. It's the brand new Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C-Y. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. And Steve, you need to pump it up a little bit today. Yeah. Yep. Got yourself a loss. I mean... Well, I got nine, I think, right? You got eight. Eight, okay. But your opponent did get a perfect ten. Yes. Yeah. So that'll throw a monkey wrench into the whole plans right there as sure. it goes. Sure, sure. Well, <laughs> so we'll have to see how it goes right now. And we got Kyle in Burlington to take you on. Kyle, are you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Kyle will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Kyle, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. After Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman's uh, next start in what Quentin Tarantino film? Kill Bill. Yes. Who wrote The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? Mark Twain. Yes. What birds are traditionally used as gas detectors in coal mines? Uh, Canary. Yes. The gr- what group had the 2005 hit song titled My Humps? Uh, TLC? No. Um, oh, pass. In what Disney movie was Princess Aurora the protagonist? Pass. Lasting only a season, in what MTV show did Claire Danes star? Oh, mm. I don't know. Yeah. In what year of the mid 2010s did Dave Letterman retire from the late show? 10, 11, 12? No, no, no. What musical instrument appears on the Guinness beer label? That's a lute? No. Uh, uh, liar? No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, Kyle, no. you got three correct. Uh, didn't drop a deuce. Didn't drop a deuce. But. That's nice. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's nice, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's nice. Yeah, that's I nice. Guess. Did great job. Okay. Participation trophy. Maybe a done. juice and an orange slice. <laughs> uh, that's about all you're going to get there. That one. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm walking into a buzzsaw. Well, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, uh, put him down gently when it comes to that one. Ah, are you ready? Yeah! 
After Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman next starred in what Quentin Tarantino film? Kill Bill. Yes. Who wrote Great the movie. Who wrote the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? Tom Sawyer? No. Mark Twain. <laughs> yes. What birds are traditionally used as gas detectors in coal mines? Pigeons. No. Uh, crows? No. Uh, flamingos? No. I'm a flamingo. What group? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll eat your grandma. Wow. What? I love that guy. What group had the 2005 hit song, My Humps? Uh, Black Eyed Peas. Yes. In what Disney movie was Princess Aurora the protagonist? Snow White. No. Sleeping Beauty. Yes. Uh -oh. Lasting only a season. And what MTV show did Claire Danes star? Oh. Uh, my So-Called Life. Yes. In what Jordan Catalano. <laughs> what year of the mid-2010s did David Letterman retire from The Late Show? You said mid? Yes. Uh, 2015. Yes. What musical instrument appears on the Guinness beer label? A harp? Yes. In the sitcom Seinfeld, who played Elaine Bennis? Uh, oh, crap. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct. You win. Eight to three. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Sorry, Kyle. Whew. Now, if he was if he was on Wheel of Fortune, he would not have got that right. Right, because I didn't say Luis. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Julia sorry, Louis Kyle, Dreyfus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah you're right. There's yeah. no E on the, 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 the Louis right But I'm going to allow it because it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't. There was enough of a difference there. So congrats, Steve. And for a texter, if you win, can you please play the Sweet Victory SpongeBob song? Is your victory song? You got it. Oh, look at you. I'm a giver. You're a people pleaser. It's a nice one. <laughs> it goes for a while, actually. That's the uh, the new version. <laughs> yes. uh, the only one that you did miss, Kyle got correct. Uh, it's called Canary in a Cold Mine. Oh, okay. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even know that saying. Oh, you really? What well, is it yeah, like? Is that like a sex term? <laughs> No, it, it like the dog in a bathtub. You just, well, no, but it could be when you think I about mean, it. I mean, I mean, no, yeah. it's like no. a sacrificial lamb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like they a, would literally use canaries in coal mines, and if uh, they died, then they knew that the gas was the uh, the kill you type of gas. Mm -hmm. Get the and hell then, out. Yeah, then everyone else would get out of there, and uh, just only the uh, canary would be sacrificed. Yeah, and, that's uh, how it is. Yep. Poor canary. Yep, poor canary. And my so-called life. Also, that was the spot where we first met uh, J Jared Leto. That's right, this is Jordan Catalano, baby. Yep. Okay, that's like like that's why you knew that name. I thought that was like the actor's name or something weird. No, but. that was the boy. That that the, that was her interest, Claire Danes' wow, interest. Wow, so in that's where Jared Leto got his start. I believe that was his first first big acting role. The and one I that totally they, don't. Yeah, I, I totally don't even remember. Like I remember the kid, and I didn't even know that was Leto. Yeah. This is a long, long time ago. <laughs> and they both, well, they both have had amazing careers. So that's mm -hmm. that show. There was talent in that show. Yeah, I liked that show when I was a kid. Yeah, so did I. And I wasn't even a kid. <laughs> well, good for you. I thought it was two seasons, but I guess I didn't know. No, it was only just the one only season there. one season. Yep. yep. And they were done. One and done. Yep. One and done. And just like now, with Steve and his win. Congrats. Thank you. Good job, Steve. Uh, there's a Pornhub fan. He goes by the name of... <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. I know. Yeah. I know. This is such a weird thing. You go, like, I, I, I don't know. Would you call yourself a fan? I suppose. I mean, I, you, you go to the site. Um, his name is Lil J Dub One. Um, of course, I now no, it's not a little J Rub one. <laughs> <laughs> that was have probably ever, taken. Have you ever commented on Pornhub? No, but I do like to read the comments. I ain't gonna lie. Like there are times where I'm just out of just pure curiosity. I'm like, why does this video have 17 comments? And then you read the comments, and it just makes you like, it makes you laugh, but also feel really bad for the world that we're in. Yeah, I, I um. I just feel like, look, I'm watching it. I don't need to have the, the proof out there that I watched it. You know, it's like, hi, everybody. I'm a little J-Dub one. Let me tell you, like your work, man. Right. I never watched the thumbnail and go, I need to share my opinion about this five minutes that I just spent watching this video. Yeah. Well, little J-Dub one, though, posted a, a pretty shocking comment. He wrote, boys, I am here not to watch, but to announce my retirement I have officially found the one person that is right for me. She is brilliant, beautiful, and loyal. Every day I wake up and realize how happy she makes me. Now, I'm curious. Does that mean that the way that he phrased it, it makes me feel like he's created like a network of like other commenters and they like they know each other. He's like, hey, everyone. Hey, boys. I know we all talk all the time here on Pornhub. But I'm done commenting. I think you're right, Steve. Right? I know that's the oh. way it is in other communities. See, here's what I think. 
I think he had to make a public statement because maybe the lady in his life found out how much he uh, checks out Pornhub. Oh. And he has to make a public statement in order to um, relieve any uh, insecurity she may have. You may be onto something because he goes on to write, The reason I am done watching porn is because it feels wrong, almost as if I'm cheating. I hope one day you guys that are reading this fine thing that I have, and I know you all miss me, and I will miss you. Lil J Dub signing off. Mm-hmm. You know what? Brad's probably right. He had to make a blanket statement so that she would be aware that he's done. Yeah, someone spotted the comment and posted a screenshot of it on Twitter last week, so it's going, it's gone viral. Four hundred thousand likes. Um, it is interesting. Everybody has their line when it comes to what cheating means. And I mean, look, if that's what they're, if that's what J-Dub believes and, and his, and his girl is also on board with that, all right, well, they get to define the parameters of their own relationship. Uh, but there are others that have no problem with the significant other watching porn with or without them. Yeah. I mean, it seems weird to like define that as cheating though. Yeah. People do, Steve. You're I right. Think, I think it, it is you, weird, but people right. do. Like you could say, th- I, I am uncomfortable by this. Or I'm, I find this inappropriate. I can understand those. But when you're like, wait, if you watch porn, that's like cheating on me. I'm like, well, that's just silly. Like, we need to, like, really yeah, come on now. pull out uh, Webster's Dictionary or something like that. But I oh, feel is like- that we got to pull out? All yeah. right. <laughs> I was a little worried for a minute. Yeah, like, right? Hold on. We're, We're not going to have a contest one. to decide who wins this argument, are we? <laughs> See, I was totally in that boat. And then someone described it as, if, you know what, you set your boundaries. These are my boundaries. I am not comfortable with this. And for you to do something, you're like, okay, I respect your boundaries. And for you to do something against it like looking at porn then in a sense you are betraying them because you were respecting their boundaries and now you're not i can understand that yeah. i still don't view it as cheating same like it's, it's such a weird thing that's why you gotta really when you start i mean you know and this is something that the average dude doesn't like to do and that is set boundaries and have these conversations because they're uncomfortable but then you find yourself in a in a situation where you are in a committed relationship and oh boom something comes up and you're like what? Really? You want me to stop this? And it's like, well, this conversation probably should have happened before you got serious. You know, you really need to go, all right, let's talk about all the rules of this relationship. And a lot of people don't like doing that. They just like to sort of go, oh, well, we'll deal with it when it comes up, as it were, and then, okay. I just went on one of the sites for research purposes to see what kind of comments are on there. Oh, you're not researching. Research. 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 I can't read. He's just <laughs> researching. Yes, this is totally for research. I can't even read, like, 98% of these comments. Although oh, I do really? appreciate that the, yeah. the, the ongoing theme, and at least in the video I clicked on, is that people are like, the guy just shut up. Nobody wants to hear your dumb voice. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. And then there are people actually like saying, they're, they're like propositioning the, the, the woman in the video. I'm like, I don't know if she's on these pages reading the comments. It's going to get back to you. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It's, well, listen, I can do much better than that guy. I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, she's she's not going to get back to you, sir. Oh, that's weird. One of them just says, "Yeah, see, how you, you need to trade Russell Wilson." That's a weird comment. To oh put wow, on, interesting. On well, Pornhub, everybody but... seems to really want that to happen, no matter where they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is time for listeners on the loose. This is where you get to pick the topic. You get to guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts. We'll take those at 918 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Brought to you by Snoqualmie Casino. Listeners on the loose. This is where you get the opportunity to say what you got to say, but you got to follow Steve's rules. It's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, earlier, said, hey, Migs, I know that you've said that P.K. Subban is uh, your favorite hockey player. Did you happen to see what happened to him during a game? I did. BJ, well, I, don't I, don't know know I, don't, I don't know about this. Well, before you show BJ the, the picture, I don't know if you're a fan of heart because this is an insane thing oh, that happened. He got cut oh. by a skate. Oh. And it covers a good, I don't know, what would you say, like three, maybe four inches of his leg? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe four. Oh. Oh. It is gnarly. The best part is three pictures on his Instagram page, and you scroll through them, and the first one's the stitches. The second one is the actual open wound before it got stitched up. And then the third one says, sensitive photo, 
me sh- click here if you want to see it. I'm like, well, we've already seen the inf- like the the nonsense yeah. in the photos. I think you should have put this at the beginning of it all. It kind of comes as a surprise, but he got the order wrong. That that's some, that I've done that myself, where I thought that was the first thing I was sending, and it turned out to be the third thing I was sending. Here's um, the crazy part: the caption he wrote when he had, when he shows this because he's still in all of his gear. It just says "Never miss the shift." So like he got cut, quickly got stitched back up, and went back out. Uh, and oh, played that, the game. That guy's a warrior. Whoa. Oh, PK, I'm hoping that the Devils uh, don't protect him when it comes to the uh, expansion draft. Oh, can cool you handle it, BJ? Are you ready for oh, it? All right, I'll, 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 all right. So first is the the, 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 the stitching. Okay. It's pretty gnarly. All right. Yeah. All right. Now click to the next picture, and it's uh, on his Instagram page. Oh, whoa. that might be five inches. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. I'm bad a, with inches. I'm sorry. That's a deep <laughs> cut. <laughs> oh. Right, oh, man, that's a beating. Oh, Woo. just gnarly. I saw that this morning. I was like, "Oh boy, that's rough." And I just love though he made it a point to say, "Didn't miss a shift." <laughs> now, Steve, such a hockey player thing. Yeah, you're a hot. You're a hockey player. Yeah, you have played hockey. You played ice hockey. How often do these slices happen? Because that looks terrifying. Dude, I've been very lucky. I've, I've I've yet to be sliced by a skate. Like I've been jabbed by one in the back, and it didn't feel good. But like it's like you could feel it, kind of like, oh man, a couple more like. Just a little bit more pressure, and it probably would have cut through the skin. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, the worst of though is the one with Clint Malarchuk. If you just go on YouTube, former Boston Sabre and brought, I mean, f- former Buffalo Sabres yeah. goalie, and it was like in the eighties, I believe. And a player came up and like tipped over, and his skate cut the jugular vein on his yeah. neck. Oh, yeah, that was beating. It's, I remember watching that game live. And at that point, I was playing roller hockey, and I was trying to convince my parents to take me to learn how to ice skate and play ice hockey. And that game happened, and they showed the footage. And, I mean, he is just leaking blood all over. My dad looks at me and goes, you're never playing ice hockey. I'm never going to take you playing <laughs> I would kind of agree at that point. I think also part of me didn't want to start taking me to an ice rink because it was too far. Oh, um, yeah. But oh, yeah. this gave him a good reason to not. And the Clint Malarchuk story is just awful because after that, like, you know, he got stitched up but nearly died. He battled some depression, tried to shoot himself and survived that. And now he's like a motivational speaker. He wrote a great book, uh, incredible human being. But, like, he obviously went through some dark periods of his life and it all started because of that cut on his neck because that mess that that can mess with your mind yeah i you know i always forget that they have pretty sharp skates that they uh, that allow them to go on the ice and do what they do then mm-hmm. yeah you just don't think of it because it's on their feet but in that instance with my truck i mean just like you talk about the most bizarre set of circumstances but they're a deadly weapon and you watch the video i still don't like it, it happened so fast I, you still i have no idea exactly the moment where it got sliced because it just happened so quick and back then this was an HD footage, so you're watching it, and you know there's a slight blur to things because it's moving so fast. But like, you really yeah. don't see the skate hit him. It just, it, it. But the minute he lifts off his helmet, it's just like water. It's blood, but it's like waterworks. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Oh yeah, you, and, you, and it's just all over the ice. I mean, it's just so quick. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't imagine any trainer has ever had to like, oh my gosh, I jugular drain, I jugular vein. I've got to figure this out. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, and you're right, Steve. Watching that footage, it's just hard to, you know, you just basically see him mix it up. And, of course, you know, a goalie's got to get down to try to get the puck. And that must have been what happened was somewhere when his his head was close to the ground and maybe the somebody's skate exposed. came up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, you know, I, I you, you, again, all the years of, you know, knowing hockey, watching hockey, that's the only time that's ever happened. That I, 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 I imagine people have been cut plenty of times, but on that level, yeah. I mean, we almost yeah. watched a man die live on television. Like yeah, that's just oh, yeah, and that, right. the, the stitches on his neck was just like it, that has to be like ten inches. Is the do you think? Because I don't remember neck guards or were people wearing neck guards before that? Like you know under the goalie mask? Not as much. I think after that we started seeing an uptick. Yeah. <laughs> and like I mean, yeah. I wear like a, a a neck guard underneath my goalie mask. Also, it's because it's like it's this type of like gel foam that if a puck hits it, it'll it'll also help protect your neck from the the impact of the puck. And oh, I didn't nice. believe that until a puck hit me in the neck and I thought I was about to die. And then I realized it was just a shock. But the actual the impact did barely any damage to me. It was, it was such a weird feeling. I don't want to go through it again. But wow. like, the puck hit my neck and I'm like, oh, here I go. I'm dying. And, <laughs> and then I realized, oh, no, that's just me panicking. But the actual neck guard did its job. Wow. Damn, dude. It's amazing, like, you know, when you think of how they played hockey without any of that stuff back in the day.
Yeah, I mean, although nowadays I think pucks are coming a lot faster. <laughs> I yeah, couldn't even yeah. imagine. Oh yeah, <laughs> but oh, they're yeah. still coming fast. Don't get me wrong. It's the, that was still dangerous, but like that, it's definitely a way more dangerous. Uh, time when it comes to the speed of a puck. What amazes me is when a dude can get back out there and do it again. You know, like uh, there was a there was a ball player recently that was hit in the eye again, like right right under the eye uh, in spring training, and I'm like, I'm done. That's it. You know what? I'm not getting back up there again. You know, with a because that ball's coming so fast. Like the idea that you mm-hmm. it's coming to your head. What are you gonna do? Scream. And then <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> or like a pitcher that gets hit with a line drive, you know, just right back to the box. And you're just like, I don't know how I could get on the mound and pitch again with the yeah. possibility because you can't do anything about that. That thing's traveling at about 100 miles an hour. And a couple of times you showed a great story about the Clint Malarchuk one where he got sliced by, in the neck. And they said that his trainer was a Vietnam medic and knew exactly what happened and knew exactly what to do. And that's the only reason why he didn't die. Wow. wow. Well, talk, talk about, about luck. T- t- yeah, that's total luck. Wow. All right, Buffalo. Well, good job on you because you haven't been doing much lately, but good job on that one. <laughs> oh, so, on, yeah, I think it's like every Monday we need to evaluate and talk about crumble cookies. And somebody just said, I tried crumble cookies this weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had the Reese's one, and it was awesome from Costco Josh. Whoa. Of course, every Monday they have new flavors, BJ. Well, of course, we have to go over it. Yes. All right. So, the first one, this is the one I would go with, I think, if I had to pick. Uh, they have a banana bread one. Oh, oh that's wow. Yeah, it's a warm banana cookie with hints okay. of vanilla with a cream cheese glaze. That's where they got me. Ooh. And brown sugar crumbs. A, and bananas are healthy. Oh, yeah, this is a very healthy, yeah. and it's big, so oh, it's super sure. healthy. Nice. It's super healthy. Uh, yeah. Funfetti cookie. Oh, yeah. There oh, are people, fun. Sarah would love that. This one I think is all you, BJ. The Biscoff lava cookie. It's a oh. Biscoff stuffed cookie topped with a Biscoff drizzle and Biscoff cookie crumbs. Oh, yeah. Biscoff. Uh, my, my buddy Josh just got me a thing of Biscoff the other day. Oh, those things are so good. This one, I don't know. I'm willing to try it, but I'm a little, a little I'm raising my eyebrow on this. Cotton candy. It's a warm sugar cookie with fluffy cotton candy frosting and cotton candy pop rocks. No, nah, I'm out. I'll try it. No, I mean, you gotta I don't try like it cotton. for science. I don't like cotton candy. I like the sugar cookie. Well, then you'll just have to go with their OG chilled sugar cookie then. Mm. Uh, you know what? That, that, Nothing that, wrong with that. Wrong. Won't ever go wrong with that or if they got the chocolate chip on the menu. Oh, now I want a cookie. All right. That's, <laughs> that's not good. You pick the topic, you guide the show. It is Listeners on the Loose. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls, we got your texts at 933 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Everything is better electrified, like the guitar, toothbrushes, or cars. And Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first-ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. You can use electric when you want it or gas when you need it. It's your journey. Evolve it beyond the pump in the 2022 Tucson or Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's the listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, text message wants to thanks us. Thanks us. They want to say thanks us. You are thanks us. <laughs> they said, I'd like to thank you guys for a well-recommended weekend. I subscribed to uh, Maitland Ward's OnlyFans page, and I went to Popeye's to order that fried calamari. You got a bigger belly and bigger forearm. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. <laughs> 
Well, congratulations wow. on a great weekend. Well, it's probably yeah. from you know grabbing all that calamari. It's, oh yeah, they're apparently just so weighty. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and who is Maitland? Where, where, where do we know Maitland again from? Besides Boy OnlyFans, Boy Meets World. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. She, we met her again. Boy, Boy Met World, and we met her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they awesome. had to have done a parody with oh. her. You would think. Oh yeah. Yeah, like Maitland meets the boys, or I don't know, like something. Oh, that's that. That would work. <laughs> I have no idea, but there, there had to be something. Yeah, you got that right. You have oh, a yeah. former television star now in the adult film industry, and you you're known for doing parodies. Yeah. How do you not? Unless that's they're just a, like, oh, we don't want to touch that one because it's like, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows, Vicky? You do the research. I'm if not, let me know. I'll take you care of it later research, today. Vicky, I'm done with this. Yeah, no, get back it. to me. I'm finding all oh. kinds of porn parodies, but not that one. See, Steve, you missed your calling. You should really be a producer of this kind of thing. I mean, I probably put my application in a couple times, but, you know, yeah. I don't hear back from anyone. You have these great titles. Maybe uh, maybe you should have thrown those in to show them, hey, this is what I'm going to bring to the table, all the great parody titles. I want to give this stuff away for free, PJ. Yeah, that's a good point. You're right. You're, that's a really good point. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. Oh, uh, we were just talking about uh, hockey players getting cut by skates. Somebody said the first time I went ice skating as a kid, I cut my own neck open within five minutes oh, on the ice. Oh, no, 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 no. My family were pissed. So they cut, he, he was able to cut his own net open. He, he did it himself, this I, person. I mean, I, I don't know much more than what the text said, but that sounds like it. Wow. That's Unless a, like he fell and then someone in front of him yeah. cut the neck. Who knows? I would say they're quite flexible if they could do that. What a traumatic thing. You're finally taking the family ice skating and one of your kids just starts bleeding all over the ice. Ah, that's a good family day. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Uh, I like this one. I was leaving Safeway over the weekend in Puyallup, and who do I see? Steve Miggs on a cover Whoa. of a magazine. Whoa! <laughs> I grabbed, my wife and I grabbed the copy. It was too random and too cool. That's right, the 253 Lifestyle magazine. I was confused if it was just an online magazine, like a digital print, or if there was actually physical copies. Apparently, there are physical copies all around town. Well, you yeah. got to get me one, dude, and I want it signed. Well, I got you one. Uh, thanks to Jenny uh, McAfee uh, in Gig Harbor. She mailed us Woo! a copy of it. That is Ooh, really cool. Which I thought fancy. was pretty awesome. And uh, I, you know, the, the Canyon Road Safeway, I'd like to apologize. I might have grabbed five <laughs> Six, maybe seven copies on my They're way like, out. Wow, the two five three is flying on the shelf. What the heck's going on? I was like, I got family that want copies, and I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. And then I went, I was at Safeway, and I saw it too. And I was like, oh, they were at some like random like real estate places and some restaurants too, I guess in the South End. But the Safeway one's the easiest one to find, and you don't have to go in. Like, it's kind of awkward to walk into a restaurant if you're not eating there and to be like, hey, do you have a copy of this random magazine that I might be on the cover? Of? <laughs> that would be, dude. That would be so good. They go, yeah, we have it. Good. I'd like to buy fifty. Of them, sir. I don't understand why. And then they look at it and go, "Okay." Oh, but here's the thing, BJ. These are free. They're free. Oh yeah. So like when I was, I was leaving, I grabbed like a stack of them, and I'm like, <laughs> "Watch, I get stopped by like a Safeway employee, and like, sir, yes, they're free, but that doesn't mean you could take like six of them." And then they see that it's me on the cover, and I'm the one taking it. That's like the most like I feel like that's the saddest thing ever. <laughs> but you know, you could give him a "Don't you know who I am?" And if he says no, you could give him a copy. I just yeah, right. Put a copy, put it next to my face. I'm this guy. Damn it! Yeah, I have a right. All right. Well, I was gonna I was gonna offer to pay for it, but now that I know that they're free, it's just a matter of you. Well, you can still to offer to pay for it, pay nothing for it. Yeah, I'm willing to take you know face value, which is zero dollars. <laughs> yeah, I won't, well, I won't uh, upcharge you. But I want it autographed. I want you to write something nice in there. Okay. Or on there. I mean, you know, otherwise, to me, it's not legit. You know, it's like, it's it's like, you remember when this guy, and plus, if you become super, super famous, I'll be able to sell this piece of memorabilia. You know, it's like, you know. Dude, that's the funny thing. Like, my wife about my future, Steve. We were just, I was like, you know, it was such a cool thing. and such a random thing to even get to be on a cover of a magazine. Like, that's just weird and surreal but it was awesome like and and that was really nice of them but then to see actual physical copy it made it extra cool you know what i mean there are people that think you've made it when you get on the cover of any magazine for some i remember in my life that was a big deal being on the cover of anything they had that song the cover of the rolling stone you Mm -hmm. know being on a magazine cover meant you finally arrived it didn't matter what it could have been you know it's like doesn't matter what magazine it is it's just like just the fact that you're on the cover it's cool magazine put me on the cover i'm very excited (laughs) i wouldn't send that one to my parents but i sure as hell would love to be on the cover of that that would be great (laughs) well congratulations it's 
a cool thing. And I'm glad it's in that, that to me. I, you know what? I mean, look, being in a digital anything is really how everything is done today. Right. But for, to me, it's like, oh, it's sweet. It's right there on the cover. And for those that do want the digital version, it's just 253lifestylemagazine.com. And, and it's this month's issue and all that. But yeah, so if you want a free copy, just go to Safeway if you live in the South End. That's about, I know in Gig Harbor, because that's where Jenny sent it from, they have it there. And I know Puyallup has them. Wow, look at this. Well, until I take them all. So hurry up. <laughs> That's the issue is if you want to get the issue, well, you know, and if and if there's a tall gentleman who is uh, wearing a black T-shirt and he's hovering over the, the, the bin that has them, you might want to see if you can get an autographed copy. Well, I was there and I'm like about to take it. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, this is the, the weirdest thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. This happened. I don't. I don't. But I. I just don't want to question. I'm just going to accept it. And, and like, this is the most random thing. But I'm taking these copies. Damn it! I'm going with them. Oh, dude, tell me, come on! <laughs> but I ran out the store like as if I stole them. And even though they're free, I'm like, I don't want to get caught. <laughs> Yeah, because it is. You're right. Because you do. If somebody says, what are you doing with a stack of those? I mean, leave them for everybody else. And then it's you on the cover. I have a lot that of It's really awkward. Oh, it's oh, I, yeah. I'm glad you didn't get caught. It's Texas says, I was on a BECU commercial once. I thought I made it. That's awesome. It is cool being on a BECU commercial. That's when finally, I mean, somebody way, way, way back, way, oh gosh, I, I, I might have been like, you know, 22. And I, and I wasn't anywhere in the radio business, but somebody from Comcast asked me to be in a commercial. And that's when my family thought I made it because they saw me do it. was a local TV for a, like a park shuttle and fly kind of a thing. And they saw me being me, basically just the angry, miserable guy. Oh, wow. Like we need an angry, miserable guy, age. and you're like, I know a guy. I hear him on the radio all the time. Oh, <laughs> my, my family said, "Well, that is you. If you were if you were a regular traveler, you'd be that guy." Because they had the handsome, charming guy that he took the park shuttle and fly. So of course he was fine. He never missed a flight. Me, I was dropping all my stuff. I looked like a mess. I was cursing out everybody, and my family's like, "Wow, they really got the right guy for that part." There's a great part in it, Steve. Oh, I saw it on VHS. BG is in a bathrobe, and he looks. Yes. And he just got like a uh, thing of eggs or something, and he is swearing. I just thought, man, it, nothing has changed in 20 years. No, where no, is no. this, and how come we haven't seen it? I don't know. I showed it to the kids, but I don't I, I don't know where that VHS is. I showed it to them years ago. You're right. I, I I don't know what I did with all my stuff. I used to have some stuff like that, but I don't know where the hell it is. Oh, man. I'm no, very I'm really mad at I myself. kick myself for getting rid of my uh, VHS to DVD transform. I have one. Oh, well, perfect. There we go. Find the VHS. Oh. I got you. All right, Vicky. If I find it, I'll get it to you because I, I, it, it is, it, it, it's, yeah, it's quite one. It's one of my, one of my finer moments. It's a must see. <laughs> oh yeah, it really. But I mean, like that's it. when, like, that's when my family thought I made it. I'd already done a pretty good job getting a job on radio, but they didn't care. But you know, somehow magazines and if you're on a TV commercial, you've made it. Yeah, no, dude, it, it geeked out my family. That's for sure. And I was like, that's pretty awesome. And someone was like, wondering what's the name of the magazine. It's two five three lifestyle magazine. And if you're leaving Safeway. It's part of like the free stuff rack. So just you can grab one on your way out. <laughs> just please grab one. We have to save the rest of them for Steve. Well, I got, I got, I got mine. I didn't mention this until I got mine. That's for reason. Oh, you're, so, so you're set. You got enough copies? Oh, I'm going to keep grabbing copies. Don't oh, get okay. me wrong. Uh, like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, keep popping into Safeway and everyone will grab one here, grab one there. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Yes. Oh. Dude, there wouldn't <laughs> be any copies left. It was me. I'm surprised you left some. I would have taken them all. But my wife's like, why do you need seven copies of this? I'm like, well, it's going to be more soon. But I don't know. I just might need them one day. Well, just tell your wife. When? <laughs> don't you realize who I am and then give her a copy? <laughs> That's a good point. Dude, no. See, to me... I think that would be the ultimate if you always carry one with you. And then you could really say, don't you know who I am? But you'd have a follow-up. Like, no, but usually people don't know who you are. And like, you're shy like this, this raggedy yeah. magazine out of my back pocket back yeah. here. That's what every actor should have. Whenever they do that and they get in trouble with the law or whatever, and they go, don't you know who I am? They should really give them a DVD of one of their, or, or Blu-ray of one of their movies. Ah, oh, man, this texture has me beat, though. He says, my oh, ex-wife was on the cover of Hustler's Hometown Honeys. Yeah, does that make her one. famous? Yes, it does. Yes. Yes, it does. Besides, first of all, it's a magazine that people pay for, Steve. So that's what I mean. <laughs> How do I get to be a hustler hometown honey? You well, Steve, money. you oh, have yeah. the breast for it. I will tell you. Thank this. you. <laughs> yeah, you really do. I, mean, I thought so, too. Yeah, you should get a shot at least. I mean, I don't understand why. It's now that you're on the 253, Hustlers Honeys, they, they got to be next. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I should reach out to the publisher and be like, hey, do you have any hookup over at, with Hustlers Honeys? Now that you, can you put in a good word for me? I mean, look, you know what? It's just one step at a time, Steve.
Yeah, that, that probably won't ever happen. Huh? Yeah. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. Uh, somebody want to know. My husband just gave me a hard time because my DVR mainly consists of Ellen. I have 93 episodes that I have yet to watch of Ellen on our DVR. So we were just wondering what's the one type of show that's stuck on your DVR that takes up the most space. Oh, or, or do you want to add and you never watch it? Oh, boy. Dude. Yeah, but I'm always re- I'm, I always want to have shows ready for Kathy just in case when she comes up she wants to watch something and there are two shows that I have maxed like you can only keep a maximum of 25 on the TiVo and it's um, for me it's Shark Tank and Penn and Teller's Fool Us I mean I keep them there because I don't watch them but I want to have them ready if she wants to watch them yeah mine's I mean dude with the little one I barely get to watch the things I like to watch like if we're watching TV sometimes it's more often than not you know we'll put it on like Mosh and the Bear and stuff like that but so I have a lot of wrestling like the non WWE and AEW. I know, dude. Oh, like, shocking. I have about twelve wow. or fifteen episodes of Ring of Honor. I've yet to watch, and about thirty episodes of Impact Wrestling. And I refuse to delete them because I'm like, what if I get some downtime? I'm like, when am I going to get this downtime? When is Tatum going on a vacation where I'm not going to see her for like three days? <laughs> you would have to be in traction, Steve, stuck in a bed. I mean, that's the only way you're going to watch that, right? So I, I should just hit the delete button and just accept that I'm not going to ever see him. Oh, that's that. D- that's that TiVo. They used to call it TiVo guilt, but now I don't know how many people have a TiVo besides me. But you, you f- I, I can't. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like I've wasted something, even though I've literally wasted nothing. But maybe the electricity it took to record them. But I can't do it. It's that TiVo guilt. I bet Rev's is Wheel of Fortune. You're pretty close. No, I deleted all of the Wheel of Fortune I had after I was on the show. Don't blame me. It was such a poor performance. I wouldn't oh, want to remind you. Shut it. up. Oh, sorry. For the longest time, though, I had a bunch of Jeopardy questions because I was borrowing questions for Beat Migs. Right. Oh, shocker. So I would be, uh, I would watch those episodes so I could get those. And I had, I don't know, like 15 or 20 would just be saved up over all the time. But then I found a website that just puts out all the questions. So I didn't need to use that oh, anymore. Look at that. I mean, they made it even easier yeah. for you to be lazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vicky, what about you? See, I don't mess with the DVR because that's all my mom. So right now she's got a bunch of Turkish soap operas she watches, but Excuse dubbed me, what? in Wait, Spanish. Tur- Turkish soap yeah. operas? That are, it's in Spanish? But are dubbed in Spanish? Yes. One is called like Elif. And so she watches that about a little girl and a mom and all the drama that goes on with their life, like them trying to get kidnapped and assassinated. I don't know. But she's wow, constantly they're, they're, watching How does she even okay. find out about these? I don't know. And I'm like, Mom, watch these other shows on Netflix. We can watch them together. And then she's like, I found another show that I watched 20 years ago, another you know, Mexican soap opera. So I just don't mess with her DVR because I don't want to mess with her viewing stuff. That's so. pretty hardcore. Turkish soap opera in Spanish. That is something that I don't think you'd ever see me do in my life. I mean... <laughs> Close enough money. Money heist is the closest thing I might get to anything like that where I'm watching a show that's not in English, but I still will want to watch it. And right. I'd, I'd make fun of her, but then I'll sit there and watch it with her, and then I get sucked in. Oh, well, there you go. So I try not to ask any questions because so then it'll it, suck it, me in it, more. Is it good? It, it's it's just like a soap opera. Like, I wish things – it takes like 20 episodes oh, to get yeah. to the point. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, other than that, it is interesting. All right. Well, you know what? There you go. I never knew I would ever even know about a Turkish soap opera. Same. But there we have. Yeah. yeah. And now if you ever learn Spanish, you can watch it. In Spanish. In Spanish, BJ. I can't wait for this. This is going to be, you know <laughs> what? A lot Steve, of work, you, man. You can watch your wrestling and I'll watch my Turkish soap opera in Spanish. <laughs> It'll be a dream come true. It sounds like it. Two zero six four two one rock uh, Texas seven seven nine nine nine. But actually, I'm realizing instead of that, it's time to uh, really talk about why people oh wait why people are cooking food to have it taste like what their pet is eating this is a bizarre phenomenon i will tell you all about this at 950 on the rock bj and migs mornings on the rock 99.9 kisw 99.9 kisw the rock of seattle Listen, I'm not a pet person, so maybe this is just beyond me anyway. But the people at Purina have just released the Fancy Feast Petites Feast Cookbook. And uh, I know enough from working in the dog food aisle back in the day, uh, pet foods, that Fancy Feast is a, is a brand of cat food. I get that. Um, but this is a cookbook where it's a human cookbook. It's human food where you make yourself meals that taste like... 
the different flavors of Fancy Feast cat food. Rev, would so you the, do this? Well, I'm not eating the cat food, so probably. Oh, boy. You, you can so try that, it. That way you and your cat can enjoy the same kind of meal. You'll have like a Aww. honey sriracha chicken with fried rice, and your cat will have uh, the chicken rice and gravy, and you'll be like, hey, look at it. It's a fancy piece. Oh, that sounds great. I mean, some of the wet food I get for Lulu, I'm like, damn, that actually sounds pretty delicious. I'm not eating the, the food that's in that package, but I'm like, babe, we should try and like recreate this. So here we go. Yeah. I know. It's like chicken, broccoli, and carrots. I mean, the food is human food. I, I guess that's cool, but I, I just that's a lot of work for them. It's like, hey, here's your food. Leave me alone. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go microwave something. Out of I can bond with Dan Carl. I love this. Yeah. Well, it's got 12 recipes. We have downloaded free from the Fancy Fee- Feast website. How about that? Oh, it's right. free. Yeah, but you got to buy their Fancy Feast food to go for the cat. That's the thing. That's their. That's how they get you. Steve. That's how they get. You. Uh, yeah. Ryan Castle. He's up next with a 12 pack. DJ and Migs play of the day. When did you have the coolest job ever? When I was in middle school, my band teacher's house unfortunately burned down. So he paid me a thousand dollars to dig through all the wreckage and find anything that was worth saving. What was the coolest knickknack that you found? Uh, a VHS copy of the Robin Williams live action Popeye movie. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> I don't have it. Nice. Uh, the only person in America that would be excited about that, and you, you called it my show. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. Of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of your all of your information. You list all of your assets and all of your creditors. That's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities. And so the court hearing is just usually about a five minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.